two parents, four kids, and four pets, not just living inside, but also full-time traveling all in one converted school bus. Let's get into it. Welcome to my crib. Whoops, I tripped. <laughs> I'm John with the BI family. I'm Sean Ling. I'm Alexis. I'm Matthew. I'm Chloe. I'm Jacob. We've lived on this bus for about 13 months and we're loving it. We started our build in July of 2018 and we got on the road in October of 2018, three months later. Self-converted bus, we did everything ourselves: plumbing, wiring, all the carpentry. So this is our shoe rack. Um, obviously we have a lot of shoes. We have a family of six. So we built it for functionality. They can grab and go. They can sit on the steps and put their shoes on as they get in and out. And then on the left, we on our dashboard is our mini herb garden and our hookah. Um, we plan on redoing the whole dash and actually building it out with wood. But right now we just have this small tray that holds them from falling in and out. So I'm the only driver of the bus. The wifey absolutely does not want to drive. We didn't change anything with the, the panel with the exception of some of the command buttons. We actually got it out so that way I wouldn't accidentally hit them or the cat who likes to play over here, you know, give us an electrical drain. <laughs> so we had to handcraft everything for functionality because we had a family of six. So we built their desks like old school education desks because we homeschool. Additionally, I made storage in their seats so that they could open them up and it go all the way down. And that includes their seat belts. So we're full-time travelers. We don't have a home base. We sold everything. The bus is our home. So wherever these wheels are is where our house is. We stay usually at Army Corps of Engineer locations, uh, friend's RV house, uh, RV campgrounds, and we just have to do a lot of planning and budgeting. Uh, we essentially do that on $3,600 a month for a family of six. Um, if that's crazy, feel free to reach out to us and we can help you out. So welcome to our kitchen. It's tiny, but we do a lot of big cooking in here. I like to have everything kind of accessible. So everything that you see is kind of mounted so that I can grab and go when I'm working in the kitchen. So we have a, a pot lid holder, our dish drying rack. Um, behind it, we have these plugs that go into the kitchen and they just kind of create an extra workspace for us. Um, I, we have two racks that hold essentials, like quick, again, grab and go. So I have my cleaning products up here, hand sanitizer. Um, I have like all my little things that I need, again, hanging so that I can just access it. Um, we do a lot of baking. This thing can do an entire rotisserie chicken, so it's pretty awesome. Um, it just is housed inside of this self-built box so that it holds it there, but it also provides another level of storage and holds our fish, Alpha, the beta fish. <laughs> um, we have a two burner cook stove. This goes down on top of it. I can use it as a carrying tray to take food out to the fire when I cook. As you can tell, I burnt it several times. Um, and then we have all of our kitchen appliance additions and accessories within here. Um, rice and, and items that I need, like grains and stuff to cook with. Um, the favorite drawer is the sauce drawer. It makes it easy for backpacking, going on the go for foods, picnicking, whatnot. And then we have our spice rack and then I made these little octagons because I thought they were cool for the bee themed. I had this whole idea for a whole wall of them and then that didn't work out. We have all of my cast iron. That's what I mainly cook with. Um, they can work on the gas and they can also work on the fire. So I have a wok back there that actually sits on top of here and I can full fry all my, my Asian dishes. tea cart and coffee area we like to drink our tea and coffee so we set it up so this whole area can house all of that it comes out and it's got all of our tea inside of it and then the rest of these drawers are all for the kids to be able to access and also cooking like my potatoes and the onions how does the finances come in to support this lifestyle food gas everything uh, i was uh formerly with the marine special forces community i got out uh, i have a veterans affairs claim and that is a stipend every month that i receive and that essentially covers us. And everything on top of that is not only is additional <laughs> savings, but put forth to fun activities. We decided to get an apartment sized fridge with the freezer on the bottom. I wanted to be able to access everything that I need out of my fridge. And then whatever I kind of need comes out of the fr freezer. And this freezer is pretty awesome. It can hold a half a pig. So I butchered, put it all in there and it's, it's safely frozen away. This is our now sliding pantry. It used to roll out. It's not very, 
roly anymore. And it holds a lot of different cans and, and self self-preserved items. Our kids are known for the around the community is the kids with the walkie talkies. And so this is a home base station that's gonna be plugged up in above the office area. It's used so that we can communicate with the kids when they go hiking and, and yeah, when they're out playing on their bikes with their friends or they're just in general not in our general yelling range. Okay, so this is one of our uh, Dutch doors that we built by Dutch. That means it splits in the middle because of our magnets that hold together. Um, additionally, we have the back that opens up to the kids TV and we Velcroed on some of the controls as well as a small speaker so they can hear. Okay, so welcome to the kids bunk rooms. So we had to design a space that would not only sleep for kids, but kids grow. So we did essentially cot to twin size beds ish. Um, additionally, we put in gas props so that whenever that you lift their bed, it's again a bifold effect. So they don't need to lift their entire bed. Gas props on each end of it, and it's a simple shut. Hmm. Additionally, we kind of did a recessed shelving with our two by fours. Two by four comes across, so they can set simple objects in and inside all throughout this space uh, like Jacob give them a little lip and we travel just like that I put in some handles up here in addition to their little ladder system so they just kind of step up with their legs they grab a hold of whatever they need and they just cowabunga right into their bunks we have these wires set up uh, the top ones didn't want divider sheets yet but the older one she threw up her own so that she can pull these across at night I um, believe she turns it around and she has a little bit more privacy because she's 11 years old. Uh, Alexis has her hamster, Russian dwarf hamster called Toast. Uh, we actually just put in a secondary layer for him. She has a ukulele as well. I use magnets to hold it up to actually maximize space. Uh, likewise, Matthew has his guitar, a compound bow and two BB guns. Uh, that's kind of his array of Fun. Along with the Dutch doors, so we got the fan in the bottom half, we did a TV in the top half, and we actually have a small Roku system when applicable. We can use that at sites. Again, the little remotes, they've got a, the basic old style school CD holder, and then one of my favorites, this Miss Pac Man joystick. It plays like six games, plug it in the back, and nice away they go. So it's raining, all the kids can lay on their bunks in whatever comfortable position they feel. And enjoy a movie. Uh, I believe the last one they watched was a classic, Uncle Buck. <laughs> <laughs> I've taught my kids that each one of these windows has a red emergency latch pull handle, and that will drop the entire window out. Uh, one of the rules, though, that we taught them on the bus is if there is an emergency, you have to get out. You wake everybody up, and then you get everybody out. I wanted to have something to measure the kids uh, with because it's that classic thing that you keep for your children or for yourself. So I installed it right here. I started measuring the kids the day we came in, um, in October. Then six months later, I measured them again, and it was awesome seeing the like actual height growth. And for the kids, it's super awesome because they can always stand right up next to it and say, "Oh, I'm four foot whatever," you know, "I'm three foot whatever." Um, just just one of those nice humane things. Originally, we wanted to have this area as a shower area, but at the end of the day, we were like trying to keep water inside our house in a mobile platform wasn't the option we wanted to go with. So we have an outdoor shower. So we ended up modifying this into a, a basic storage area. We've got extra blankets. We've got a little small space heater that can heat up the entire bus. It's great. Uh, we ended up doing with a six double hooks because we're a family of six. So they usually hang a coat and then their towel. We've got our cat area, which includes the travel cage and the litter box and then our full size pit bull so she can get in there. We also have this little tuck-in area where we keep things like our uh, broom and the fox and dust tail, so to speak. So this is our tiny bathroom. We've got a lot of communal objects inside here, soaps and such. Each kid has their own little individual cubby that they put their flossers in, their Q-tips, their toothbrush, and any other uh, products that they found they like now through the years. We carry some tinctures and other, you know, girl stuff. Some simplifications we've made. A hairbrush, drill a hole, Drop it in. Oh God, pull it out, put it back in again. Uh, along with curling irons and other items like that. We've got stuff underneath here actually, our paper towels and our toilet paper just to maximize storage space. Uh, small hair cutting kit. And then a toilet that we self built ourselves. So this is just a pea diverter that goes down into a 16 gallon black water tank. And it's a bucket that we put into a bag that we compost and we throw mulch over top of. and 
for us, you know, sometimes you'll have a small smell, but it's nothing that's just not a part of the normal RVing and schoolie community. So welcome to our master bedroom. Uh, we decided to do a split approach because I did not enjoy seeing some of the others having to crawl across their bed to get something, having to wake up the other person to say, hey, let me lift up the bed so I can get a t-shirt out. You know, I didn't, I didn't enjoy that. Sleeping is one thing, nocturnal activities are another. <laughs> <laughs> go this way in a bus, you go this way in a bus. Well, you go either way and it's all jacked up, doesn't really matter. The two 100 gallon tanks, if they get to about half full and any type of rocking happens, there's oh, like God, this residual. Pull it out. Put it back in again. <laughs> it's kind of seasickening, but it's so it's funny. Heavy, so the oh yeah, the yeah. whole back end, it's like it's shaking its ass end. It gets <laughs> so sick, bro. Seasick. <laughs> we didn't have the door yet and we thought that they were really passed out and I guess she looked back but she couldn't see anything yeah. except for him standing up and all she saw was him moving. <laughs> so later <laughs> on the next she morning, she goes, what were, you, what were you doing? Like, what were you guys doing? Why were you shaking the bus? And she, I don't know why, but I panicked. And I was like, he was choking or he was trying to make me seasick. And Alexis was like, well, that's disgusting. I don't think being trying to make people seasick is a real nice thing. And we just started dying <laughs> laughing. So here's our my bed. Um, we use the gas prop system. We fold, roll our clothes, comes back down. I also carry a board underneath here that goes all the way to the front that allows our sitting dinette area to become a guest bed. So it becomes an eight foot long by a five foot wide guest bed that can sleep two adults comfortably. I can pull it across here. We just slide our beds together in case we want to be a little more comfortable or have a family movie night that we you know put in a DVD and red box it up or something. Well, like most of the the kids will all gather back here and watch movies together. So they'll all have like eight or nine kids Some... back here watching movies. We have an Xbox and the gaming system will go in here so they can come back here and play if they want to. Like we're pretty much an open house. Kids are always running in and out and around. And yeah. Madness. Sometimes we won't even pull the leaf out. The kids will sit here on the floor <laughs> yeah. in, in, in the order of the youngest <laughs> to oldest and like standing in the back and just eat popcorn or whatever yeah. and watch and they're comfortable. Yeah, with they that. have to it's sit just... on the floor if they want to eat in our bedroom. So they'll sit on the floor <laughs> and just watch with their necks broken. Additionally, I built the beds up that it holds eight of these types of boxes, four underneath my bed underneath Sean Links. We keep our daily activity shoes out and about, as well as a fire extinguisher. We have one up front too. And then underneath this floor, this is a bifold system. It, it comes up and it essentially has all our dress shoes, all her heels, all my black and brown dress shoes, because with our hanging closet, we still maintain my two to three piece button down suits. She has her beautiful ballroom dressed to the nines, you know, dresses, <laughs> and it all works out. I wanted my wife and I, as well as the family, to have more storage space. So I built this whole shelving system. We essentially split it 50-50. So additionally, uh, we dropped in these shelves in the back because it was just kind of dead space area. So instead of having stuff sit on it and it just being completely done, stuff that is even more or less used, things like passports for the whole family, our, our medical records, and that runs the entire length. We do have a little window shaker AC unit. That's great. It can cool down both sleeping spaces inside the bus completely where everyone will be snuggled underneath their blankets in addition to the fans. The fans will pull the cold air into the next section and then the fan over there will pull kind of the residual heat. I feel like it always pulls the residual heat and we both have like super cooled sections. Hmm. I decided to build a, an apothecary shelf this is my hiking rock for like day hip rucks with the kids. We just keep our, our items on the side. He has his belt hooks and other items and along with his like flashlight and stuff so we can see down the hallway if we need to in the middle of the night. And then both of us have our own little like personalized stations of of our own knickknacks. Um, I like the small capability of like putting all my knickknacks in little spaces. It's always been a thing of mine to have like the little, I don't know what it is. I like tiny little things and collecting bottles. So. And then he has his, which is way bare compared to mine. So a bag of trimmings. <laughs> <laughs> so we lived in Vermont for about two months and our friend grew CBD and marijuana plants. These are the CBD cherry wine um, trimmings off of the tree. So I just make tea out of it. 
or or I will make coconut oil infused um, massage oil basically. The reason why there's a step up and we have the shoe storage is because when we did the two 100 gallon tanks, we wanted to self or um, level them. So this tube down here is a self leveler. Whatever goes into this tube automatically goes into this one and they just continue to rise together. Okay, so this is our utility closet. Um, I have a Tagagi hot water heater and consideration when you get your hot water heater, you want it to be able to heat water faster than your pump can actually pump it. That way your rates of heat will be better than you know, your flow rate, so it won't outgun it. We have a 24 volt inverter charger. Uh, it's a pure sine wave with Ames. We have these PowerStar huge batteries. They're 12 volt, 200 amp hours for 10 hours. I have two of those. Uh, nothing is hooked up right now in this area. That's kind of our last step. We're going to be getting done in the next two months. Eventually we're going to put a deck on top, but right now when I need to clean the bus or install like the Ventastic fan or the flute for the Tagagi hot water system, I just go right here. The solar panels we're going to probably put on the front most lift of the bus because that's the weakest metal of the bus. Um, not in terms of pull, but in terms of step downward pressure. So we're gonna anchor on the front. I'm gonna end up essentially building a little flap so the wind comes and goes over the top of the panels. And then I'm probably gonna set some additional panels all the way on the rear next to our bicycle rack. That's just to let people know I am crazy. <laughs> so I put this up here because it's not to say like, oh, look at me, I got a four year degree. It's actually to say, look, you can do some of the normal stuff that's the social norm and what we're indoctrinated into and also live your life, make it your own. So you can find us on our website at www.thebeehivefamily.com or you can head over to Instagram and it's at the beehive, just the letter B, the beehive family. And then at YouTube, it's the beehive family as well. And don't forget to like, subscribe, share, follow, do all those fun things. And reach out. We're definitely here to help.